I did not want to review the Scott's Elite Spreader, but after using it for my fall lawn projects, I thought it'd be helpful to share my experience. Now, there are lots of positive video reviews of this rotary broadcast spreader, and while the Elite is an improvement over other Scott's models, for example, the Edgeguard DLX and Mini, I'll be returning it. Sorry, friend, it just wasn't meant to be. Now, for the past 10 years, I've used the Scott's Edgeguard DLX, or as I like to call it, the Deluxe, which it certainly is not. However, as flawed as it is, it's the devil I know, and I've learned to adjust to it. So when it broke a few weeks ago in the middle of my fall renovation, I immediately drove to the local Home Depot and treated myself to the Elite. The Elite is a big improvement compared to my old DLX. For example, the Elite rolls much smoother on rougher terrain given the never flat, most likely foam filled rubber tires, which are 10 inches in diameter. Its dual impellers are properly placed above the wheels so product isn't being thrown into the wheel hubs, although the wheels still have an open hub design. The wheels are spaced just outside the hopper, providing a wider footprint and therefore better stability. It has a true edge guard that when engaged closes the left side of the hopper and decreases the flow rate on the right, meaning less product unnecessarily fertilizing the driveway, sidewalks, and flower beds. And now that I think about it, the DLX works the same way, just as a single chute. The Elite is taller, has an ergonomic handle, larger hopper, stainless steel agitator pins and axle. And finally, like all Scott spreaders, it comes pre-calibrated and nearly fully assembled. You just have to attach the wheels. Oh, and the Elite also has an unnecessary phone holder and also this thing on the handle that locks the chute open, which will come in handy when cleaning or to inspect the wonky edge guard. More about that later. So given all the upgrades, you may be wondering why I plan on returning this. Well, for starters, the Elite costs $139, which is a pretty hefty price tag as compared to a new DLX, which in my opinion is also overpriced at $89. Sure, the Elite provides a smoother ride, and some might argue that having dual impellers is an upgrade, but honestly, dual impellers is overkill. I can't think of a high-end spreader that has dual impellers. Looks cool, though. And for $139, the Elite's assembly is still as flimsy as the DLX. There's ample play in everything from the wheels, axle, gearboxes, to the edge guard, which appears to have come apart again. This thing is poorly assembled. It's like a toy. And I don't have anything against plastic parts because they're easy to hose down and they won't rust. But Scott's use plastic in places that impact longevity. For example, here on the axle collars. Secondly, I'll be returning the spreader because of the terrible edge guard design. Not only does the edge guard get circumvented by about a foot off to the right front of the spreader. Let's see that again in slow motion. Watch the tire on the left and now the seat is going beyond the wheel. <laughs> yeah. Perhaps I was walking too fast, you know, really putting some ass into it, but that never happened with the DLX. At some point during my fall lawn project, when I noticed product shooting off into the flower beds, I pulled the edge guard forward a little, thinking that it would fix the problem. Big mistake. What I didn't realize is that my little tug caused the teeth of the gears to disengage each other. That shouldn't be able to happen, but again, the assembly is flimsy. This gear, which is supposed to close off the left chute, is <laughs> just spinning around. And I didn't realize it until I turned off the edge guard and product from the left side of the hopper wasn't going down as fast as the right side. So then I was questioning every application I made at that point. Seed, starter fertilizer, top dressing. So after like eight hours of prep work, mowing, thatching, applying micronutrients, aerating, during which I found grub damage. <laughs> Turf shouldn't peel back like this, but the worms are good. Hey little guys. I was left guessing, did I put down enough fertilizer? If I make a second pass at a half rate, will I put down too much? It was a nightmare. So my third issue with this spreader is the accuracy or drop rate. Not only does the dial not click in or line up with a mark on the hopper, but no product dropped through the chute to the impeller below two and a half. Nothing. I was hoping to put down Scott's Winter Guard Fall Lawn Food at a half rate a month and a half after seeding, the normal rate being three and a quarter but it couldn't be done because the dial starts at two. Regardless, when the dial was set to two, two and a quarter, nothing came out. <laughs> that seems like shoddy calibration and winter guard pearls are very small. I should point out the calibration is preset out of the box. However, given the spring design, it's still a good idea to occasionally test calibration by marking off a thousand square feet, weighing and applying a product at a half rate. I use malorganite so I don't burn up the lawn and then measuring what's left in the hopper. I also had an issue with the chutes getting jammed open by grass seed and larger pearled products, which meant piles along edges and the sidewalk. But in Scott's defense, chute jams occur with every spreader. And the final reason I'll be returning this spreader, which is more applicable to our yard and perhaps yours, is that it's simply too much spreader for our 2,000 square foot lawn. I mean, it's super efficient, and I'm done in about five minutes, 
but 2,000 square feet is better suited to a DLX, mini, or even a handheld spreader. Overfilling the Elite to fertilize a small yard usually results in more product being dumped back into a bag and stored until next time than product actually applied to the lawn. And while the Elite does a good job distributing the last few granules of product at the bottom of the hopper, product isn't falling out at a consistent rate towards the end if the hopper is not overfilled. Since the Elite claims to handle up to 20,000 square feet of product, depending on the product of course, it's best suited for large lawns, like 5,000 square feet. Although if my lawn was that big, I'd be considering a more professional spreader. Yeah, it would set me back $200, $300, but it would likely have better construction and therefore be more durable and last longer. It would also be easier to find replacement parts. In fact, I would have repaired the DLX had I been able to find the parts online. And actually, I still may repair it on my own somehow, um, maybe even upgrade it. Man, that's a good video idea. So to wrap up, I wanted to go with the Scotch Rotary Spreader because whether it be the Mini, DLX, or Elite, they all use the same settings, which is convenient given Scott's rotary spreader settings are listed on pretty much every lawn care product. However, while Scott's has mastered marketing and distribution, I mean, their products are everywhere, they can seem to master a fine-tuned durable spreader to apply their vast line of products. Is the Elite Scott's best spreader ever? Maybe, and yet it still stinks. Will the Elite get the job done efficiently and apply the correct amount of product? Maybe, if the edge guard doesn't malfunction, the cable on this one's now jammed, it doesn't even work. Is the Elite an upgrade from the Mini and DLX models? Definitely, but at $139, Scott's has got to make a more accurate, sturdy, and durable spreader. So this spreader is gonna be returned as soon as this video is posted. I can't return it fast enough. I hope this information has been helpful. If it has, please hit that like button as if the edge guard of your spreader didn't prevent you from overseeding the flower beds and subscribe if you like. Thanks for watching. Oh, you're still here, okay. I guess I'll show you how quickly I can fertilize our lawn, which is just barely 2,000 square feet, using the Elite Spreader. So each application with this thing takes about five minutes, but given I'm rolling the footage at two times speed, it's about two and a half minutes of fertilizing bliss, when the thing works. First, I go around the edges with the edge guard on, although I try to compensate for the overshooting, and then I turn the edge guard off, making passes roughly six feet from the wheel marks of the previous pass. I'm applying Lesco Starter Fertilizer, which I applied four weeks after reseeding, and Lesco is a medium pro product. The application went down pretty smoothly and accurately despite the edge guard issues that I'd experienced weeks earlier. However, since this application, the edge guard is no longer working at all. The cable's jammed inside of the handle box, so in my opinion, this thing is done. And as much as I enjoy repairing things, since I like to do that here on the channel, I'm not gonna spend my time repairing Scott's best attempt at a spreader ever while it's still in warranty. I'm just gonna return it. it. It's really a shame because honestly, I really enjoy using this spreader compared to my old DLX. The Elite rolls really well, holds a lot of product, uh, and transitions better than the DLX, even though it has impel two impellers to drop product versus one. And you know, in a moment, you're gonna see a really smooth transition so the chutes didn't get clogged and product didn't fall through to the sidewalk, like when I was applying the lime earlier in this video. And again, when it works, this thing's great. Here's another smooth transition coming up. And I actually considered returning this thing and getting another one, but given I didn't make it through a single season without an issue, it's just not worth having this thing. It's just not worth the money or the headache. And we're done. We're shot down.